Okay, uh, just getting all my notes together here. Hank, you got everything? Oh, I'm sorted. Okay, okay. I'm done. We got to be on. We got to be on the ball today because it's Wheelhouse 101. Okay, <laughs> really, really got to get all the basics right. Are we teaching people how to to podcast? Today is a day of education. How to cycling yep. podcast? It is episode 101 uh, to the Wheelhouse Cycling Podcast. My name is Joel Spreadborough. Catherine Bates is here. I'm going to talk about your wardrobe in a sec. Hank Vogels. Glad to be back. M101. What what compelled you? Because we we thought you were going to ditch us after. The the the, uh, the craziness of episode one hundred. No no no, I'm good. You can't. You we're not going to get rid of me that easily, mate. <laughs> yeah. He's about to swan off to France. Is this the last time? Yeah. When so, are you leaving? Yeah, I'm leaving on Velo Tours trip on Friday evening. Oh wow! So that's ex- over great. for the Tour de France with those guys. It's going to be awesome. Can't do wait. Do you do you do the full tour? Oh, we we do lots of climbing mountains, and we go to one mountain stage. And we go to one start, so it's a bit too much to follow the tour yeah. the whole time. It's mm. just madness, millions of people. And so, yeah, you get the, the joy of riding the really good climbs and seeing the tour and getting that experience in, a, in the group. And, you know, I've been doing this about eight years now, so I love awesome. doing it. Um, I'm just – the problem is I'm not losing weight. I'm generally putting on a kilo a year. So <laughs> it becomes harder every year for me. So, but that's okay. I'm I'm pumped to be in here with you guys and hey, look. Yeah, it's great. And get Firstly, there soon. it's not a race. No, I mean, it's so not. it doesn't matter. But also, e-bikes. Oh no, I can't give up. That's oh, it. Oh, they're giving up. I reckon it is. I reckon it's giving up. I mean, the day you get an e-bike, I think when you're like fully, actually, I am an old par at the moment. I am a grandpa. You are. I yeah. am, but uh, I think once you take an e-bike, that's it. Mm. Uh, that's oh, you're it. never going to go back. No, well, it's too easy then, isn't it? You're going mm. up Alpe d'Huez at 35k an hour. That you sounds know what quite I mean? fun, actually. Mm. Mm. Yeah, All right, so what mountain yeah. are you going to climb this year? Oh, we've got... we've got. The, oh, now I've put you on Tourmalet, the spot. Tourmalet, <laughs> <Camilla, laughs> the Deux Alps, you know, oh. we're going to Are you all on those the bike? Climbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do oh, like three climbs a day, so... It's a huge amount of climbing and a lot of fun, a lot of eating and drinking and, yeah, good times. Yeah, okay. Given we're Australia's favourite cycling podcast, they must be pleased you wore their shirt on. Yes, I know. Yeah, massive set. plug, isn't it? <laughs> yes. That's very but good. they are the best touring company around. So it, probably too late to get your ticket uh, for this year, given no. that you're leaving on Friday, but uh, maybe two of us should come. Get you guys should come next year. You guys should all well, come next year. here's the big... We were actually going to... S- Stow away in your luggage this year, but we might as well just tell him because, you know, cat's out of the bag. We were going to anyway. Yeah, uh, hey, well, that'll be Get awesome. Uh, the the dinners and the yes, the meals and the wine and oh, that it's all sounds all pretty good terrible. to me. Buffet experience the night before the tourmalade. I'm like every, looking at the itinerary. Every, every night is buffet yeah. experience. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is you can get away with it because you're just burning huge calories. Yeah, oh, fair enough. And fair if you're enough. not a high-performance athlete, you know, it's And those days are well and truly yep. over. Yep. <laughs> okay. So 35 miles uphill. Uh, what about on an e-bike? Yeah, but that does work. I mean, that we generally have like one, one person... A trip on an e-bike, so yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And I'd be, I'd be holding onto their back, the back of their with an Oki strap, just, just yeah. Oki strap just on their seat the post. Toe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Having a toe, so much to talk about this week, Kate. Uh, before we get to everything, I just want to point out our set. We've gone minimalist. Um, we have. This week, we we normally we have a plethora of yeah. beautiful jerseys, but so this many. week because Hank has brought in a beautiful ARA Skip Capital. Ta-da. That's a ripping jersey. jersey. Yeah, so, it is. That's actually mine too. Is it? It's never been worn. Oh, look at it. Look, tags it's on. got like a little plasmid thing in the back pocket. Yeah. I like how they do that. In case you didn't know where to put the – yeah, I love that. Some that, of the, the jerseys, um, tour jerseys, have a baguette in the back pocket <laughs> like drawn on. It's very cool. Anyway, beautiful jersey. I thought it black deserved sheep, mate. Its, uh, its own table Fantastic. today. Fantastic. Yeah. So, it's a ripping strip. Yep. Ripping strip. A ripping strip. What have you been up to, yes. Catherine? I've been back on the bike. Yeah? Joel. Yes, I've still got a bung foot, but on the bike, it's okay. Can't Actually walk. riding on the road? Yeah, can't walk, foot. but can ride. Yeah. Because I got these beautiful new bike shoes. I'm actually going to do something separate on social media about it because me and bike shoes have a very bad relationship. Okay. Mm. I don't know about you, Hank, but I have always found them so uncomfortable and they squood your foot in and you get out the yeah. other side and your feet either... 
flunks out like a piece of steak or you just can't feel them. Mm. Like it's never been great. But I found a pair of bike shoes. They're lakes, which I've never had before. Oh, they're the best. And they're wide. Yeah. They're so good. They're okay. so comfortable. So I'm in heaven. So um, you're removing so the moon taking... boot to apply the bike shoe and you're not experiencing yes. too much discomfort. Not while riding, no. Otherwise it would be a I'd, uniquely I'd probably have a podiatrist listening, so yeah, we okay. can move along. But um, no, I, I have been riding, which has been quite nice. Good on uh, you. Because we've got, you know, B to GC to get fit for. Yep. I've got a lot of work to do. Uh, uh, yep. But I've also been a bit inspired this week because the it's Tour arrived. de France album has arrived. Uh, and this is the official guide album. <laughs> what am I, a Beatles fan? Uh, <laughs> it's, the, it's the official guide by Ride Media. And it always does such a good comprehensive job of detailing the men's and women's stages. Um, but they've got this fantastic feature this year written by Gina Ricciardo mm-hmm. uh, on the history of the women's Tour de France from an Australian perspective. Oh, cool. I've never seen an article written like this on the history of the women. It's so cool. Uh, it has a picture of Liz Heppel who got third in the Women's Tour de France in 1988 on the podium, uh, which is really cool, with Pedro Delgado mm-hmm. uh, and Johnny Longo. Very cool. And look, for Hank and I, it's like a trip uh, down memory lane, is, some of the photos, with Anna Wilson, Christy Scrimmager, Back in the Alison days. Wright, Margaret yeah, Hemsley, Sarah Carrigan. Uh, so oh, it legends. is a really, really great... Um, yarn. It's on page 172 of the official guide. Fantastic. So dig into it. Get we need into more it. features like that. We time. really do. Don't we we yeah. need like well written articles and um, you know like getting into dives. the nitty gritty of stuff and the history of cycling and not just you know who's the fastest and so you yeah. know that old school. I mean that that the ladies cycling Tour de France back in those days they were racing concurrently with the men's. They were for like it two and a half weeks. Cool. Amazing. It's, wow. Okay. So many articles now are previews essentially. They're just what do the stages look like? Who's going to win? Who's mm. going to you know? It, it almost just gives you a base to then watch the coverage. But yep. these stories, I love them. And Escape Collective are brilliant at doing it. They do some really good investigative stuff yep. uh, and go down some wonderful rabbit holes. And I just love that Ride Media uh, have done this. Fantastic. So well done. And I might also add, at date of record, you've still got a bit of time to get in before the end of financial year uh, with some great bike bug sales. Um, so get on that. Because thank you very much for their incredible support. Uh, for us in this wonderful podcast. Beautifully, beautifully said. Uh, Wheelhouse special, uh, whatever, end of financial year. No, it's not. It's a wheelhouse. Well, I, yeah, wheelhouse birthday special. I bought my shoes um, on special there. Yep. So I was very, and I'm very happy with them. Okay. I'm still picturing you riding in one normal size bike shoe and then having like this custom. No, no. (laughs) No, two normal shoes. But it did, I, I felt a little bit bad this morning for everybody in Brisbane uh, it's normally such a beautiful winter, but there was a wee bit of rain, and I'm pretty sure that's because I had yeah. brand new white shoes and white socks on. That's obviously the reason. Yeah, yeah. Well, I spoke to the Bureau of Meteorology so, earlier, and they, they said that's exactly what prompted I think the showers. It, that breaking yeah. a two week spell of, of dry that. <laughs> and so, new bike day too. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, yeah. if there's ever a drought, let me know. I'll yep. bring I'll bring the white shoes out again. And <laughs> you didn't have uh, white nicks. <laughs> no, I like no, didn't. No? But if it's a really stubborn drought. That might be what yeah. I have to do I with like the white, the white nicks. Nicks. Yep. Okay, well, no, shameless <laughs> plug. I'll, I'll do a quick one <laughs> as well. I can't lift my arms at the moment. I'm, I'm, I'm three days away from finishing the push-up challenge. Uh, 2,700 push-ups completed in a frightfully short amount of time. Uh, raising well done. money for Lifeline. Awesome. It's great to see everyone involved and some lovely support for that as well. And I was just looking at my sponsorship links and people that are donating and all of that, which is really lovely. And I see that I'm being trolled on on the Instagram page by someone called E.P. Merksy. Uh, and I'm just wondering if that has any connection. Uh, sorry, sorry. E.P. underscore Merksy. Yep. What do we know uh, about this account? Well, I know he also trolled me yeah. uh, this morning on social media. Merksy's on Instagram. Oh, my God. Look who's entered the conversation. Yeah, just... Uh... Just giving the people what they want. <laughs> it's <laughs> caved, yep. Oh, it, uh, you yeah. know what? Max is pretty popular, actually. There's of course he quite is. A oh, I've been a follower of his for ages. Uh. Yeah, I was going to say, like, yeah. <laughs> Jumping on the wagon now. We've been here from day one. Uh, that's fantastic. 
Mer- Merxy, welcome to the internet. Uh, Thank you. And I, w- I also want to give Merxy a shout out while we're here because today's uh, wheelhouse rundown, which they're always stellar, of course, but today's has been curated mm. by Merxy. So I feel that I can take the liberty of saying we have a Walkley Award winning <laughs> We do. It's, a, it's particularly good quality this week. They're always yes. good, but today's just... It is very, yeah, very yeah. comprehensive. It is, isn't it's it? Yeah. Very yeah. comprehensive. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well done, Merxy. Love it, Merxy. Fantastic. We've yep. got so much to get through this week. We've just been looking at some photos on the internet uh, of Gordon Ramsay looking uh, frightfully banged up. We're going to talk about that. A lot of announcements this week. Wedding bells, comebacks, calling it a day. Just like it's just one of those weeks where everything happens at once. The emotional roller coaster is, is real in the sport. Happy birthday to the Tour Down Under, quarter of a century. Yes. Now, we have some unique insight into the beginnings, the origins of the Tour Down Under. Um, may or may not have a, a special guest who can speak to it. Hey, Hank. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I was there. I was there the, the whole time. The, the, the very first Tour Down Under in 99, got second in the first stage, got beaten by a Danish guy, Niccolo by Larsen, who's really funny. And then I end up riding the front for Stuart O'Grady, who won the very first wow, Tour Down Under. Awesome. So, that's so cool. And, um, yeah, it was very cool. And it was uh, back, it was almost like in 99, it was like a, I wouldn't call it, the Sun Tour used to be called the Fun Tour because it really was. The boys just got on the piss and yeah. had fun. <laughs> uh, and and I'm pretty sure the first couple of years was pretty much like that and the Tour Down Under. It was like there's a big joke to come out to Oz and have fun, stay at the Hilton. It's certainly not like that now. No, no. <laughs> a little bit more serious. It was bloody yeah. hard though, I must admit, riding the front with Magnus Backstead for five full days in 42 degree heat. It was um, nasty, but yeah. yeah. Stewie really think, wanted to win that. I don't think the Hilton bar does quite the trade it does now than it did 25 years ago. Oh, yeah, I, yeah we've been kicked out of there real late. Oh. <laughs> real late, real often. Real. <laughs> Keeping it real. All right, well, Quick we move on. Looking at the uh, <laughs> next tour, to, tour Down Under, what's changing, a little bit of retro, a little bit of sentiment, I think, coming mm. back into the event. We'll get into that. There's another tour. Oh, just give me a minute here. Another tour that's happening overseas. Uh, in July, which one? Oh, what's Tour de called? France. That's the one. We're going to talk about that as well. Um, <laughs> let's just let's just go to this this incident. Celebrity chefs and bikes shouldn't mix, based on what we're seeing. Gordon Ramsay's had a stack in Connecticut, um, and he looks like what have you said? A, a piece of raw tuna. <laughs> I think he looks like a piece of raw tuna. It's that yep. bright purple. It mm. it looks very very concerning. His entire flank. Mm. Is really electric purple. It looks like some. I think it looks reckon, like a, a plum. Like a some giant serious plum. internal I've bleeding. Never seen anything like it. No. I've crashed many, many, many times. I've never seen skin go that colour. That to me looks as though that's some internal bleeding. So he might not be out of the woods. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Okay, there it is. Nasty. It's it, it is it's pretty rough. Yeah, I don't. But uh, well, interestingly though, his key message was wear a helmet. Well, his helmet. Did you see the helmet? The helmet mm. looked pretty smashed it up. Banged up. Yeah, yeah not yeah. not as banged up as his flank, incidentally. But yeah, well. It's so, did you see that? Like he had the full hand shake going on in his interview with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So, he what was that bit. about? Was that like him? He's had some kind of mental. I'm not sure. I I didn't notice that to be honest. Was he shaking he in had, his interview? His left, yeah, his hand got the, was ah. was yeah. shaking, and I wonder if that. I mean, he's certainly not a nervous human being, right? Could be a whole heap of medication, obviously, with post, like, pain-killing stuff that gives you a little bit of that, maybe. I don't know, but it does, it was a little bit... I mean, he was out and about very quickly, given the amount of bruising and the clear injuries. Mm. So I think Mm. he's probably running on a whole lot of adrenaline Mm. and painkillers. Good on him for... Good on him, though, for getting out of there and saying, you know, be careful and wear your helmet. Wear because your helmet. you yeah. need people like that, you know, who are not just cyclists, you know. Like it's a full celebrity around the world. Yeah. You know, in the UK, in, in, in America and everywhere for that matter. And it's great to have someone to say, and you might save a life, actually. It's you know, in fact, people, um, the message from him is a lot more powerful than from a Pogacar or yep. from a Michael Matthews because people are like, oh, yeah. Yeah. You're a cyclist, you would say that. 
Um, well, yeah, so I like sure. it. He basically said if yeah. I didn't have it, I wouldn't be here. Uh, but he also said no major injuries. So as far as what that bruising does entail... Mm. Uh, I suppose he's not in okay, hospital, yeah, so good, on the basis of that, he would call that not major. Mm. It's perspective, right? Proper banged up, though, didn't Proper he? Proper banged up. Okay, Kate, going to you now. What else is making news this week? Uh, well, Cadell Evans got married. Oh. On the island of Mauritius. So congratulations to him. He married his partner, uh, Stefania Zandello, and beautiful beach ceremony. So we're very happy for our only, remaining only Tour de France champion. Um, yeah, I'm just looking in our inbox. Um, did, did the invite go to our spam or something? <laughs> or didn't, uh... It was a very uh, intimate ceremony, I believe. Yeah, I'm an ex-teammate of his. I never got a start. Those, Don't worry, that, man. Right? Those pa- Which... Intimate ceremony, in other words... Budget wedding. <laughs> I don't know. Based on the gown and the location, I'm going to say yeah, there wasn't Mauritius. a lot of budget about it. But uh, Not a lot look, of Best Westerns in Mauritius, <laughs> fair enough. We've had him on the show <laughs> and, in fact, in the middle of the interview when we had him on, uh, his son came in uh, and, you know, tried to wreak havoc in the middle of the interview and get involved. He's very cute. Like, yeah, awesome. He, yeah. I love he's that a, stuff. He's a it's good awesome, family it's man, awesome. you know, like he really, really values yeah, he really is. his oh, family and, and it's great. wonderful to see. So We're huge fans. Obviously, this was really early on when he came on, uh, when we were basically still like, what's a podcast? And he was <laughs> he was awesome. When, so, when we were reading the 101s. Yeah, it was very much 101. <laughs> we're going back probably 99 episodes and now it's us doing the 101. So let's go from Wedding Bells to uh, the end of the road. So one of our favourites, Hanging Up the Cleats, as well, Kate. Yes, Grace Brown has just very surprisingly, I think, shocked the cycling world uh, domestically and abroad by announcing that she'll retire at the end of the season. It came with uh, quite a heartfelt and emotional uh, explanation, but she said that she misses her family, her husband, she wants to have a family of her own and yep. misses Australia and she's had a wonderful, wonderful time in the sport. That It was a very difficult decision to arrive at but that ultimately that's what her heart was telling her. Mm. So, 31. It's oh, not old. It's yeah. not old. It really is not old. So it's a real mm. Ash Barty kind of territory. It's, it, on a personal level, mm. I am thrilled for her because okay. to be able to have the conviction to really chase your dreams and there would be a lot of noise. There would be a lot of people who said, don't do it, there's so much yet to come i reckon you'd be one of those hank like if she came to you and you're the team director you'd be like mate mm. you're on a you're on a cash cow you've no. just won lbl like you're can't at the peak it. of it what are you doing I, I can't believe it it but i think that is a shows a real strength in her character that mm. despite that and it is the same as ash Barty, like they want a bit more balance and they're mm. true to themselves and it's yeah. making hard decisions. Oh, yep. But I, a loss for the sport and a massive loss for yes, Australian, for Australian team. Oh, because we could see a gold medal in Paris from Grace Brown and that will be essentially, you know, then and world championships like her swan song. And oh, yeah. Nobody saw that coming. No. I, I don't know why. I, I mean, just when you've finished and you're retired and you think you, you've just got to have nothing left in the tank. And you know what? If the computer yeah. doesn't work in the car, the engine doesn't either, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, as an analogy. And that's obviously happened. But, I mean, if I was her, geez, you could cash in big time now. This is just the point where cycling, women's cycling, is just about to explode. I believe it's just going stratospheric now. Yeah. And she could cash in the next three years. Yeah. Big time. So my question is maybe... You know, why, why stop now? You want to absolutely have nothing left in the tank when you retire, I reckon. So well, it, maybe that's what she's got to already. I mean, maybe it also points to the pressure that a lot of athletes now, female athletes, can step away, have a baby, have a family, do it all. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, inverted yep. commas when I say do it all. In mm. the old days, you couldn't, if once you had a baby, that was it. I mean, unless you were the Russians and they had their babies when they were... 19, 20, 21, not kidding. And then they started racing again. But generally, you as a female athlete chose longevity of career or family. But you don't have to now. Yeah. A lot of the athletes, Lizzie Armistead, Ellen Van Dyke, mm-hmm. are having babies and coming back. Coming back, yeah. But it is a bit different for Aussies. It is really different for Aussies because the Europeans, they can leave their baby at home with family, with grandparents. They have a whole community to help. Um, support that but 
it, it's a different story for the Australians. She's she's kind of alluded to a little bit of homesickness in a sense, like not not being back in Melbourne, not not having. I guess I'm I'm assuming alluding to that support network around her, not having that. Mm. Does, on hand, does she? I mean, maybe she needs. It's to, hard for Aussies to go out is, and do that. Yeah, but I maybe agree. she needs to duck into Melbourne for just a week in winter. <laughs> Guys, I can't help but notice she made that decision after being on our show. I mean, uh, another we've ruined another one. Hold on, one. do you yeah. think that she wants to well, join the desk? Might need to get another seat at the table. We might. Easy. Okay, or, or this you, is a round table. You curate, it is. You curate one rundown, and all of a sudden we're all on notice. Yeah. <laughs> all right, uh, oh, fair enough. Hey. Oh, I mean, addition. Not. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah it was great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got to say, some of her team names. I I love Team Gusto. And yes. the wiggle high five. Yes. Holden. That's got to be. You yeah. Holden team Gusto and the wiggle high five. Mm. Great team. Yes. Names. Gusto. Can you imagine wiggle. an NRL team called the wiggle <laughs> high fives? <laughs> Up against the Tigers at Leichhardt on Friday night. Maybe they should. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they should. Uh, it's captain, <laughs> captain coach of the wiggle high five now. Uh, look, congratulations. 23 <laughs> tour wins, I believe. Uh, 20, so early uh, 20s, something like that. Yeah, in, in the podium in at that level. So LBL. LBL, Obviously. that's the really big win. one. Huge. Um, world Championship medalist. You know, you know, Ash Barty's playing an invitational doubles oh. tournament at Wimbledon this year. So, a couple of years down the track, two I down know. unders turning, I don't know, 27, 28. Why don't Jimmy. they have mm. a two down under? Like, invitational. Oldies, invitational. <laughs> oh, I can see where this is going. <laughs> oh, you up no. for it? You Maybe for if it, there was Drakers? a downhill race, down. like down Mulunga. <laughs> yeah, do. Oh, if that's it's my up for lunch, <laughs> hang the downhill, oh killing bagels. Downhill. No. Um, there, look, there's some sure. writers yeah. from my day, like your Mark Hemsley's and Lizzie Tadich and Anna Wilson. I don't reckon they're far off race weight. I oh, know. <laughs> so, no, it thank cracks you. me. Brown <laughs> is expected to re- represent Australia in Paris, which brings me to your t shirt, mm. Catherine. It is. I have a Team Australia. Paris 2024 t-shirt on, yep. uh, official supporter t-shirt, get yourself one, yep. get your family one, they're fantastic, I love it, I've got the Olympic spirit. Uh, if you are asking me to blink once, twice, I, yeah. no. Is Grace in? I can't Shall we say Grace? That. Shall we say, wow. shall we? I mean, what yeah. I could say Goes without, without saying, breaking right. any, yeah. I Come mean, on, Kate. You don't have to even blink. We just know actually, it's yeah. No, if yeah, Grace yeah. Brown isn't in the team, then well, there's something wrong. The Olympics must we're be cancelled. We're, we're yeah, boycotting. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> that's the safest bet in the whole team, I think. Okay, we'll talk a bit more about that, but let's go from retirements. We're talking about comebacks, and we have a big comeback. We have an AVDB comeback, yeah. and it's great because we can get our our letter groups out there. More and more. Yeah. Well, you know, I think that the Dutch national team are lacking at the moment, yeah. you know. <laughs> MVDP, ABDP, yeah. Yeah, like Demi Vollering and Ellen van Dyke. DV, EVD, there's all only three, the, two and three letters. We want four The massive talent coming through. No, Anna van der Breggen retired a couple of years ago. She'd lost the love of it. She's been in the car at SD Works as the director. And she's brilliant. She's such a smart bike rider. It's not just about her physicality, which got her to the very tops, to the world champion, to the Olympic champion. Mm. We thought that was it. She's back, ladies and gentlemen. Awesome. Or gentlemen, gentlemen and mercy gentlemen. It's so good. But So she's had three years off and has been in the team car, still involved in the sport, but now said that, you know, t- to her, she kind of achieved everything she wanted to and then some, but she wants to come back and just have some fun with racing. Okay. So In SD Works. In SD yeah. Works. Because they haven't won enough. They, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, between Kopecky and Vollering and, you know, they're missing some. But... Mm. What I'm really oh, curious Lord. about is <laughs> we haven't yet heard where Demi Vollering is going next year. Rumoured to be UAE. FTJ or UAE, depending on who has the bigger budget, I reckon. Yeah. But we know she's leaving. We know a lot of Kopeka is staying. I wonder if in the background she, knows. she knew and... She's like, oh, well. She what? just thought... I'll take your spot then. Yeah, me and... To see how good you really are. Yeah, like it's quite interesting. But okay. also, yep. she's also Crikey. been in the car... And front seat, the brains behind a lot of Vollering's wins. And now they'll be racing each other. Mm. That's cool. So is Vollering going or staying? We she's don't going. Know yet. We just know she's going because SD Works As she's told them have said, okay. we 
gave her a time frame. We offered her a contract. She has, she didn't even let them know she wasn't staying. She just gave them radio silence. It's in which average, case, SD it? Work said the assumption is she's leaving. Okay. Wow. Okay. So, well, yeah. maybe that's the the reason behind it. Okay. You mm. may have hit the nail on the head there. It's curious, but, isn't it? I mean, three years out of the sport, that that's going to take some coming back. But you know what? She's she's the best, one of the best that ever was. Oh, so absolutely. Muscle memory is pretty good there, and I'm pretty sure she hasn't um, blown out like I have in the last. <laughs> years. It's I can confirm based on photos that she looks roughly race weight. Roughly, roughly ra- race mm. weight. That, those few years in the car, and as you say, you know, uh, masterminding some of the work of Demi. Um, is it at 34, because we're talking about Grace is only 31, good few years mm. left. At 34, are you starting to get to the point where the brain knows a lot more that the body can't quite execute? Mm. You know what I mean? That kind mm. of, you finally get it. You finally get the sport, but yeah, I mean, if you time. If you look at something like, you know, the Tour de France and you know, for the women it's shorter, but even for the men with 21 stages, some of them are won on fewer... On pure physicality. Mm. And some of them are won because, you know, somebody is just so dominant. But a lot of them are won on strategy and on Mm. daring. And it's because of their experience that they're able to get the wins. And Mm. so I think it brings a really interesting element back. It used to be a bit more about, especially in the women, uh, I used to call them, and I still do, there's just not many, lungs on bikes. Like people who have come to the sport don't know a lot about cycling. I wouldn't even call them a cyclist, but they're just these incredible athletes and they just happen to be on a bike. Mm -hmm. And the women's side of the sport used to be full of that because there just wasn't the depth or opportunity and so people could quite easily transition over from other sports. But that's changed now and so we don't really have that, the chance where you can come out of nowhere and step into the sport at a high level just because you're fit. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, in reverse, that means that there's a lot of opportunities for people who are maybe less fit or on the back end of their career but are so experienced that they know how to read a race and take the opportunities. Yeah, no, I agreed. You always get a couple of those outliers mm. um, and like the Christian Faulkner type you know, who are just so bloody strong mm. but don't, you know, they have to be walked through everything. No. Um, and we're not really versatile like the Dutchies but I think that's just from... I mean, if you go back in, in history in those nations, Dutch girls are on riding when they're five. Yeah. Six years old, seven years old. They're already riding. They ride to school. It's flat country. Cycling's been in this life from their mum and their dad and their grandpa, whereas, you know, Americans not really that sport uh, that, that way. So if you yeah. kind of look at it that way, it's, it's, it's bred into your culture. But they, okay, yeah. I remember so. also talking to a sports physiologist and him telling me if you look at talent and you think of a bell curve, physical talent, just like intellectual ability, falls roughly on a bell curve. So the people on the outlier at the front, mm-hmm. they could be out of the sport for a couple of years and come back in and still be better than 90% of people. They're not going to be better than the other outliers, but their natural ability mm-hmm. mm. is still a number of standard deviations above normal. And yeah, sure. even within, you know, there's a, a bell curve within the pro peloton, which, you know, sits at the top end, standards deviations above mm. a normal people, if you want to say normal people. Yep. But when you consider talents like that, and they're the likes of Pogacias or Vingegos or <laughs> Vanderpools or Van Arts, like the guys who even when big bad things happen, they can come back because naturally mm. they are just at a higher level than most can ever train to. Yep. I well, reckon Van der Breggen's in there. Well, okay. Ander Van der Breggen, she's, I would say Voss, Mariana Voss, maybe by the smallest of margins has her covered as the goat, right? As the goat, yeah. As the goat. <laughs> but we're talking like bee's dick. She's in the paddock. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of okay. being the being the <laughs> she's goat. in the paddock. Yeah, of yeah, being okay. the absolute goat. So she's in the goat paddock. Back. She's in the paddock. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so they, they share the same patch. They of do. Pasture. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> All right. Interesting. Uh, well, yeah. Good luck to her. I, I love hearing it. Uh, you know, we were just talking about Grace Brown. You get to that point. It's like, look, I just need out. Three years later, I need back in. So you never, never know. 
Um, looking forward to throwing out a lot of chat about AVDB because we love again. Oh, your uh, your Dutch Trident's back. Yeah, well, what's a, what's a four pronged Trident? A pitchfork. <laughs> it's a Dutch pitchfork. <laughs> The it trident becomes quite, a pitchfork. It doesn't quite have the same ring to it. No, we'll work on it. That's but okay. I think the trident's in my boot, by the way. <laughs> I've been looking for it. Oh, that's where it got to. One of the children, while I was driving, <laughs> yeah. pulled it out the other day and I nearly caused an accident. Oh, wow. And I cursed your name. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Legends of the Sport. Now, we're about to talk about the Tour Down Under and uh, going back to some some wonderful memories of 1999. But I just I want to quickly mention uh, acknowledgements. Because I believe a certain someone had a sports oval named in their honour <gasps> over in the uh, the beautiful West this week. Hank, do you know anything about that? Um, not a sports oval. Wasn't it oval? No, not a sports oval. I they I got. Uh, I'm always away in Europe when they have uh, a, an awards night, and I got put into the uh, Trinity College Hall of Fame. A Hall of Fame? Well, there you go. Yes. Don't be humble so. now. It was a giant photo of you on a fence. Yeah, here it is. Yeah. There you go. Oh, there, there you is. go. Look, Look at that. that. Sports. They love that old photo of me riding around in a helmet with mud on my face. Well, you do look like an a absolute weapon. Yeah. yeah. They <laughs> so it actually faces the bike path right next to the Wacker. Yep. And oh, Trinity cool. College is right up against the Wacker, so every man and his dog rides around that bike path there. So they put it up at a good spot. My brother sent me that. He's actually away with the Olympic team himself, uh, and he sent me that photo because he's based in Perth. My whole family's from Perth. I'm about 50 cousins over there. So, um, But, yeah, cool to see that. Um, haven't, haven't been back to Trinity College since they uh, – Kindly asked me to leave in year 10. Oh, oh. hold on, hold okay, on. Okay. You got marched out the door yeah. from Trinity College. No, now you're a Hall of Famer. And now you're a Hall of Famer. Hey, they, <laughs> they, they, they didn't know they had a good thing, did they? Jeez. Oh, the, oh, feel, the feeling yeah. was mutual in year 10. I really wasn't concentrating too much <laughs> uh, in year 10. So there was some conversations made. But it's funny how you can make the Hall of Fame yeah. after even having those conversations. Isn't, isn't that, that interesting? Joel and Kate. That is very funny. That reminds me, yeah. it's, a, it's the Shane Warne thing. He kicked out of the Australian Cricket Academy before he played a test and then a few years later... Uh, Hall of Famed there as our finest graduate <laughs> yes. for the rest of his life. He said, them. Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> congratulations, Hank. I don't know why I thought it was a sports oval. That's next. The sports yes. oval, swimming pool, tennis court, doesn't matter. That's Bella a great, great yeah. acknowledgement. The especially, drink is I like Especially that. considering the backstory of the grade 10 <laughs> deport. Uh, okay, let's talk to it down under. So the stages are out. Um, $87 million it brought in last year. Ooh. Wow, that's good. No gone wonder up. they keep it. That's what EP Merckx is also offering to donate to my push up challenge. So that's <laughs> very generous. Very generous. Excellent. <laughs> Come into a uh, few buckaroos, have you, Merckx? Yeah. I'd like to see one on the desk there, Joel. A push, a push up? up on the desk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeez, a I'll chuck, one. I'll chuck in a end. lazy a eighty-seven one. million yeah, for yeah, that too. Yeah. I will. I will do push-ups for donations. Don't no, you worry. I'm desperate <laughs> to get it done. Yeah, yeah. Desk, <laughs> desk, <laughs> desk pushies. Uh, highlights. Highlights of the stage announcements. What do you think? I think there's been a bit of a hiatus broken this year. We're getting back into a bit of a very special retro locale for yes. the end of the race. Well, I like that Wollonga is back. Yep. Because I was devastated when they took Wollonga out. Is Richie making a comeback and, well, on this? I reckon well, he did this year. He did? He did yes. The, he did the oh, Strava. The time right? trial, he yeah. Did yeah. Thing. That's right. And he went pretty quick. But even if Wollonga from a sporting perspective isn't the perfect choice, I think it is, but even if you wanted to argue that, I think it just has its place in folklore in Australian cycling. 100%. And as such, it should just be a given, in my opinion. So it's really great that that's back. But... Really interesting with the announcement, for the first time ever, the Classic, which used to be on the Saturday yep. and the tour started on the Monday, the Classic is now a full week earlier on the 13th of January and the men's tour down under doesn't start till the 21st of January, so eight days later. Um, so that's curious. I suppose that's a training camp for the fellas. Well, they all get their 10 days before anyway and I'm assuming they're going to let some of the Aussie-based teams race that classic. Yeah. Anyway, yep. I'm hoping. Throwing one out there for you, Stewie. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> yeah. if you're listening, please, <laughs> Stewie. Stewie, this Do you remember time. that time uh, in 1999 where I busted my balls for you? Oh, yeah. Come on, let us in. Uh, so yeah, uh, yes, Hank will give you the jersey. 
No. <laughs> well, will, will you give him the yeah, jersey? We did do that. We've done the tour down in the COVID years, and we actually knocked off Richie Port. I might add. Oh, with hey. Angus Lyons, Angus Lyons winning up there in Wollonga. Oh, the well, time. them they're fighting words, and the women's. Tour Down Under will yep. be wedged in the middle there. So they will have the Friday, Saturday, Sunday um, preceding the men's tour. So you will now have from Friday to Sunday, uh, from the 17th onwards, mm. the women's race and then the men's race back to back. So the men's is still six days, the women's three. I'm hoping to see an increase in that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, bit by bit, they're on their they're on their journey. Uh 22% climb in there, Hank. Uh, it's called <laughs> Pound Road. Pound Road. Pound Road. Pound Road, okay. Because to to you feel like you've been pounded after you try and go up there. Yeah. I wonder if I've been up it. I mean, you would have remembered that. I mean, I'd lived with Stewie back in 92 and we probably did all these roads, but so long ago. Mm. It's My memory's not real flash. Yeah. Well, this, but this you course would is that. very, it's a, not a cut and paste, but it's, similar to the original course isn't that part of the whole nostalgia of 25 years it is yeah Yeah. and the the final um circuit will go around the final circuit from the city circuit yeah Yeah, the city circuit from the first day so a bit reminiscent fantastic do you think the hilton bar will invite you guys back for a reunion It would be yeah, economically yeah. a good idea for them. For them, I it would be very economical. <laughs> the only thing is, back then, a beer was two bucks, now it's sixteen. So, well, there is that. I think times have changed. <laughs> Inflation. Yeah. Are we going to? Uh, are we going to go? Oh, Mercy, we've got to go. Yeah, we've got to talk to Zwift. We'll we've got to go. Let's do a podcast down there. Yeah, let's do a podcast. We, I think, we have to go. Uh, last time we did it on the corkscrew. Uh, Easy and. If your mm. arms are sore after all those push-ups, mm. they, it pales in comparison to how sore my arms were after dragging the trolley of gear <laughs> up there, up and down the corkscrew. Oh, my God. Uh, but yeah. it was worth it. That was fantastic. Good so show. good to see so many people. I remember riders, us, like they were climbing faster than we were descending. They we, were, <laughs> we were that buggy. <laughs> they we were, were going past us. Go, yes. You guys okay? Do you need any help? Like, no, <laughs> we're fine. But, we and it was fight. great. We got uh, we got bombed by <laughs> James Tobin, uh, ducked in for a chat, and then halfway oh, through, chitty, 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 he goes, oh, are you recording? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that's mate. Right, yeah. Yep. And it's Joel all got on there. Joel got on the cover. We got you. Yes. Chasing Jay Vine. Oh, oh that's did. right. Yes. You, yeah, inspi- you did too, in, Sorry, Maxie. inspiring yeah. Jay Vine. Because inspiring, yes. Joel chased, like ran ahead of Jay Vine with a big sign saying, get go, wrecked, Jay. Get wrecked, Jay. Mm-hmm. And Merxy was filming it for the podcast, so both of them ended up on World Feed mm. <laughs> running. That's so Can't good. Run Thank you. Yeah, I've been, yeah, I was very calm. That was impressive. I, yeah, yep. very, I don't see what's wrong with I took photos from face, afar. Like, Although when they're riding in an elite <laughs> bike race. And, it's, you know. it's, while we're reminiscing. God damn <laughs> He loved it. <laughs> yeah. I'm literally... Spittle. <laughs> there was spittle escaping from your mouth onto... But, but you know what? He sped up. He did. And that was the point. He did. He went faster. And he won. He did. He that was fantastic. for his life. <laughs> <laughs> and while we're reminiscing, Joel and I thought it would be a good idea, Hank, to go... In, in fact, inspired by Merxy. Merxy yeah. was probably sick of us and said, go and meet the people. Go down the mountain, go and meet the people. So we had a wander down and we were having a chat and it was a meander down anyway. We get far enough down to the very steepest point at the bottom mm. and we're having a good old chat and we hear the helicopters the job and of- the police cars come through Uh-oh. and we were like, oh, my God, we've got to get back to our corner and we start running <laughs> oh, yeah. up the hill and I had to stop at like a number of times in front of people that I'd just met and kind of, told yes. you know look at me i'm an olympian blah 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 <laughs> and i'm now like <laughs> on the side that was very fun we've got to go back um, we've yeah, got well, to go I'm back there. absolutely yeah uh, lock it in Murphy. Who's taking us yeah 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 for yep. sure maybe go on a tour but yeah velo velo tours. tours do one at the velo tour, tour and under actually oh yeah. there you go yeah. and they do heaps around tassie oh, well, that's now sweet. in italy two plugs so yeah t- <laughs> we've a got trip to Adelaide, right? two trips planned yeah, excellent okay. i have absolute nightmares about corkscrew just the last point there charlie walsh used to make us do that 10 times <sighs> bottom to top <sighs> in the seat and if he, the, we got oh. out of our seat he used to yell at us oh that's really? when they used yeah. to call it strength it's endurance efforts right okay 
Like so knee, he, he had knee crackers. Yeah. Oh, knee Did crackers. you just say psycho? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolute psycho. Um, he used to make us do uh, five times up Norton Summit in the biggest okay. year we had. And then do course career efforts. I, d- I did a lot of strength and endurance time. efforts up Norton Summit as well. They make if you I strong. never go up there again, I'll be happy. They make you strong, though. I'll give him that. And he's like, all right, okay, that's sure. it for the warm up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, exciting. We'll be there. I, I'm sure of it one way or another. Uh, probably hitchhike, but we'll be there. Now, let's go overseas, uh, like Hank actually is, but let's talk about overseas because obviously the TDF isn't too far away. Now, we are going to hit you with some dream team picks and some selections and look you could do worse than listening to our tips that's for sure given our form uh in the gts so far yes it's been, I, I agree no it's been appalling well no oh, we had a good run at the tour last year our giro was a fail Lacking. 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 Look, a few big inclusions who may or may not make our dream team so obviously cousin Jonas. Um, hopefully when he comes over for Christmas this year, you'll be celebrating another tour win. Okay. Well, since you've mentioned uh, Jonas, so the context of the Dream Team, the Eight Nations Cup, mm. uh, a fellow on the Couch Peloton on Twitter, Mark Pryor, g'day Mark, we will be sending our teams in this year. Eight Nations Cup, you have to choose a different rider from a different country, so you can't have double up. So you can't choose Pogacar and Roglic because they're both Slovenian. It is cutthroat. Oof. It is hard. Brutal. But we've all picked two. There's four of us here. Um, Merxy, you've picked two. Hank, you've got two. I've Harsh got two. Harsh conditions. And Harsher uh, than Hank's training rides back what in Adelaide. I, what I'm going to tell very... you is that uh, Cousin Jonas has not made the cut. In anyone's team. In, well, there's eight riders in our team. Merxy, who are why. your – who? you start with your two. Well, I'm going uh, Gamay. Good pick. Uh, from oh, nice. Eritrea. Eritrea. He's from Eritrea. Um, and, and I'm also going to go with Cav because I love... Look, I've got oh, it's sentiment. That is a sentimental pick. Here today, look. It is. Oh, you've got Boy Racer there. And I think he will win a stage. Okay. He's got a good lead out. He's going to get break the record. He's going to do well, it? Well, okay. we... Hank, no. I want to talk about... I mean, Not we'll talk happen. about that, but I want to talk about the course Sorry, because no, there's a lot of opportunities. Um Joel, your two. So we've got Cavendish and Gourmet, your well, two. Look, I didn't realise Jonas wasn't in our mix. Oh, I'm, I'm do now, you now want to threatening swap. to go rogue? Hold on. Hang on. Who the two got? I wrote down for you, though, Joel. Yeah, I know. A well, Philipson and Pagacha. <laughs> I know, I know. You can't I love swap Jonas. one of those out. Wait, well, we got to have Pog, but why does it got to be me? Well, oh, just I gone see. safe bet. Good on you. Exactly. I didn't have any say in the matter. I want I want Jonas. You want, wow. okay. okay. At the, so Pog. who are we crossing out? For Pog. Pog's gone. Or, or Philipson. Oh. Philipson. Oh, no. Hold on. Take Philipson out because he hasn't won anything this year. Take Philipson out. Okay, we, so we can't f- pick a team without Pog. Okay. <laughs> it's, that's so ridiculous. So Pog and Jonas. Oh. So <laughs> That's a good. Oh. How's that for a combo? Is that all right? That's pretty good. So we've that's got like, Slovenia uh, and Denmark follow, yep. cut off. There. I'll have uh, uh, Michael drink. Jordan right. and LeBron James. <laughs> Thank you. Yep, yeah, yep. great. All right. Um, I've chosen Mariana Voss. Oh, no. Damn. Uh-oh. Uh, I'm going with Derek G because he's my favourite ornithologist. And <laughs> and he, you know that he's going to be top five about nine stages. Because G is good. Oh, oh my God. Okay. Ornithologist. He's so Hang he's, on. He's good with feet. <laughs> Had enough he's of that. Good, he's, good use. So he's not a the podiatrist. Uh, teeth. He's good with teeth. No, he's not an orthodontist. He's uh, an ornithologist. Uh, he's a bird watcher. Uh, like uh, Phil Liggett is yeah, a bird watcher. Well, maybe he needs to watch yeah. the road a bit more than yeah. just <laughs> win a few more bikes. No, races. I like – so I've got Derek G and I've got um, Dylan Grunewagen. Yeah, cool. Uh, yep, yep, you've been on Grunewagen. Schnelly Jonge. Yes, he's a very Hell fast Schnelly young Jonge. man. He is from the Netherlands and sporting a new national champions, Jose, I just, after I, the weekend. I can't yes. believe we were going to list a dream team without Jonas. Mm. It is an it's an outrage. He's your cousin. He's how awkward. Well, you know, I mean, there's a lot of <laughs> hey, okay, good to see you. I lines in the cousin kingdom there. And to be honest, he doesn't return his phone calls or request to come okay, on the show. Okay, so there is so, something happening. Okay, you know, this is personal because it actually can't be performance related. <laughs> no. Okay. It's no, a blood it just feud. it just was an unfortunate because <laughs> look, I'm desperate to have 
quite frankly, now that Philipson's gone yeah. and we have room for Belgium. Hang on. Why can't we have... V- well, hang on. I'm, 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 I'm changing mine. Hold on. Okay, so <laughs> Hank, you went for Carapaz oh and I Matthews. I went Carapaz and Matthews because I reckon Matthews going to have a real good one. Yep. Yeah, okay. So just put a line straight through Carapaz and put the man on... The man. Van Aert. The man. Wout Van Aert. Wout yeah, yep. has Van made the, the team. I feel for Carapaz though. Double heartbreak. Look now. at that. Yeah, I know. First I mean, the Olympics, now the wheelhouse dream team. Yeah, he's missed out. I'm sorry, but... Now that Philipson got scratched, Excellent. I've had to come in from cover. Okay, yeah, so, fair to, <laughs> so <laughs> let's okay, go through yeah. it. We've got Derek G. We've got Dylan Grunewagen. We've got Wout Van Aert, Michael Matthews. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got today Pogacar. The, the two weak links here. Yeah. Yeah. Jonas Vingago. Uh, salty. Mark Cavendish and Biniam Gourmet. It's so a got, pretty yeah. bloody good team. That is a pretty bloody good Eight Nations Cup. I love that. Uh, right. I love that Gomez in there. All right, That's Mark, we will oh. submit that formally. We are um, we are really relying on Cavendish here. Nah, I reckon I reckon we should change it, Mercy. Oh. Uh-huh. Mercy, yeah. Mercy, you got to get rid of Cav. <coughs> Is Phillipson no, back I'm in? Sticking with him. You got to stick with him, pick. Mercy. It's a sentimental pick. Oh, you yeah. reckon he's going to break the record? He's going to break the. He's he's got a good lead out, mate. He's going to find the line. I think even if he doesn't, I love the sentimentality of picking him because yeah. it's the yeah, last time you can. Because if you picked well, Yates, so I reckon we would have won. I reckon we would have won it. That's the only okay, reason. Well. Simon Yates. It's the only reason he's at the tour. Greenwich. Just to win that. Just to win. Is that it the last and time? And there's reckon? plenty of yeah. flat stages first mm. week. There is. You're right. Oh, yeah. Well, let's talk about that because mm. the first stage it's is hard. hard. It's potentially it's well, for it's a wow well, for now. Well, but he's not as he's he's not at his fittest. It's potentially Pogacar takes the yellow on stage one, which would upset me because Joel, I'm going to start my rant. That's probably going to go for the entirety of the tour. We had him. We had him. It's, I do not think a tour should ever be set where the sprinters don't pretty much certainly get a chance of getting the yellow jersey from day dot. Mm. Ooh. Oh, yeah. No, I I like the history of that. And what you're saying mm. there, but yeah, okay. it's starting in Florence and it's just going straight uphill. And I mean, sucks. I guess when you're in Florence, there's not many other no. ways to go short of doing a criterion. But no, there isn't. Are and you worried hard. about Cavs' legs <laughs> starting well, climbing up. so early? <laughs> it goes straight up a Maps thousand meter climb, climb. straight out the gate. Yeah, with ten k into the race, they go straight uphill. Mm. Yeah, when's like his first, first time ever. genuine stage shot? How how far after? Two. Oh, yeah. So it's next day. So for the first okay. 14 stages, there's only two hard days in the first 14 days. Again, let, okay. let's, let's, when we use the word hard, the Mountain. parkour. The parkour. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, this is yeah, coming yeah, from the guy who rides 100 kilometres an hour <laughs> and is a Hall of Famer. But yeah, yeah fair enough. At oh, Trinity okay. College. The, last, yeah. the, third, the third week is absolutely filthy. Yeah. It's <laughs> horrific. Yeah. It's horrible. It's nasty. There's uphill time trials. There's, you know, Plateau to Bay. It's got... Just up and down, you know, like you're nailing the coffin stuff but if yeah, you're a sprinter, yeah, yeah. right? But the first two weeks are super sprinter friendly. Well, this what? is what I love. Sorry, this is what I love about you, absolute lunatics, because you're like, <laughs> it's filthy, it's disgusting, it's awful. It's I can't, can't wait. wait. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, as you describe it, and I have seen it on paper, but talking about it more, yeah. the common thought is that Pogaccia will be very hard to beat, but that Jonas in particular, who's mm. now back in our dream team, will be really good in week three, mm. but he may suffer some losses earlier on. But actually, he may not suffer too many losses early on if so many of them no. are coming down to big groups mm. and There's bunchies. Stage four is huge. You've got the Galibier and the mm. Lottere. Um Stage one and stage four are really hard. And then you've got medium rolling bunchies. Bunch sprints and a couple of days for like the Derek Gees to get away mm-hmm. in in the first fourteen days. So that gives Jonas another fourteen days to get better. So you know how we're counting the days down where he's going to start, whether he was going to start or not. He's had a look at the tour and gone, "I'm going to be tip top mm-hmm. come oh, the third yeah. week. Yeah, come the really important I'm time. Be tip top. So yeah, yeah it's, okay. I think. But Pog will win stage four. That's my bet. Yep. Pog will win stage four and take the jersey then. He won't take the st- jersey on the first one. Unless we tune into the very first stage of the Tour de France and you see UAE 
10K into the race, riding warp speed, like um, Jumbo Visma did a couple of years ago when Wout, Wout came in and did the, you know, Red Bull gives me wings yeah. and Philipson thought he won the stage. Um, then then you might see Pog win the first stage of the Tour de France this year. But mm. I don't think it's it's not really for... It's too far to go. It's 205k the first stage. Well, on that, two points on that, really interesting. When you talk about Red Bull gives him wings... Mm. You know, one of my pet peeves at the Tour de France is you just get used to all the jerseys mm -hmm. and then they have new jerseys. Also one of my favourite things. But they are fully coming out in Red Bull now. So they've gone from yellow war. This is Bora. Oh, sorry. Oh, no. Wout Van Aert you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, but Wout Van Aert, you know when oh, he did yeah, the... yeah, the Red Bull. Remember he did yes, the, yes, oh, yes. Red Bull gives sorry. you wings, right? Yes. So, but they've changed so, sorry. the jerseys. From green, you're right, green yeah, okay. to the blue of Red Bull. So from an overhead shot... It's going to look like an ocean. Blue, 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 blue. I have a question. Yeah. yeah. How much does it play in Pog's head? Remember when he said, I'm done, I'm fucked. Ooh. From, from, yeah, from yeah. last year. Last year. How much does it play in his head? Oh, you know what? He's, he's got one up now on Jonas. Because last year, mm. Pog broke his wrist six weeks before. Six, eight weeks before this year's Tour de France, he's now at role reversal. So he's fine. He slaughtered everyone in the Giro. And I reckon he rode a smart Giro. He took it easy. And then he's recovered and he's coming back in a good place. I think he's fine. I, it, I don't I don't think he's going to have any issues, Merxie. It, um, but good, good to hear. But the last week, we're going to see the best battle. Mm -hmm. I'm what? really looking forward to that last week because mm -hmm. I think you're going to see someone who's the best bike rider in the world right now, Pogaccio, going against a guy who won the last two, who's probably not, and this is why I said in the last podcast, Pog will take the jersey early and we're going to see the best battle in the third week. I mean, okay. potentially we won't know the winner until the, the end of off. stage 21. Normally we know it at the end of stage 20 more or less. Yeah, History has had some interesting incidents in that one, but... It's a time trial, the final stage into from Monaco and nee, Nice, finishing in Nice. Is mm -hmm. it flat? Is it? No, no, no. no. eight k climb. It goes up to yeah. Airs, up to the Col de Airs, up in um, yeah. It's it's six percent. I mean, this climb has been ridden by more pros than any other climb in the world. I would say, given the population of cyclists and that actually live in Monaco, it's not the first time but either that it's. Um, um, had the outcome of the race. So we mm. lost Paris Nice in 2001. We had Peter Van Petingen when we were racing for Mercury Viertel and he lost. We we won five stages. We rode the whole time on the front and then Dario Frigo came out and beat Peter Van Petingen in the last time trial. So we were wow, filthy. Okay. Yeah. So oh, I, know, I know this climb really well. Yeah. It puts and, um, pressure on, doesn't it? It's horrible. Until the very, very last minute. Yeah, and that's exciting, and I think it's great because obviously this tour finishes in Nice, and that's a beautiful boulevard down there. It's so on nice on the Mediterranean in in the middle of summer. And I used to live there. I know it really well. It's going to be amazing. So, yeah, it's not the, it's not going to be a sprinter's paradise. It's not going to be the procession onto the Champs Elysees there. Mm. You know, everyone's drinking champagne. It's going to be balls to the wall, straight up the hill, and we might have another. It's one of the best ever. Moments of the Tour de France history is when Greg Lamont beat Laurent Fignon mm. in the last time trial. Yeah. He bring back 40, 53 seconds to, to beat Laurent Fignon in the Tour de France. And we may see something like this in this year's tour. It's so very that, exciting. That's super, Was that pre exciting. or post uh, Le Mans? That's 1989. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. 1989, I think. Could have been earlier. Well, and then they can take their suitcases and walk home. Easy. <laughs> Most yeah, okay. Them. So Jonas has obviously been, he's had a tough year, but he's obviously been targeting this. Are you concerned about him being underdone or not enough time on the road in, well, you know, race conditions? If we believe them, yes. If we believe what we read, yes. Mm -hmm. It's an obvious concern that he wasn't, you know, confirmed in the tour until very late. And But what's to say that he hasn't, actually been able to train at full pelt for quite a while now but just hiding away a little bit like why would they come out weeks and weeks ago and say ah oh, he's brilliant like that just puts the pressure on him this more than anything mm. for a guy coming into 
what would be a hat trick of Tour de France wins, mm -hmm. takes the pressure off him. Mm. It's brilliant. Yeah, I don't reckon he's under any pressure. Yep. They, they wouldn't have put him in if they didn't believe he had a chance to win the Tour de France. Yep. Like, they, Agreed. Uh, you wouldn't e do even, it to him. Even if he, like they said, okay, you might get beaten this year. Like being on the podium, the Tour is better than not being there. Yeah, okay. What All about right. Primoz? You know what, I mean? what about Primoz? Yeah, he's going to be unreal. Is he going to mix it up? It's going to be the best chance? tour. It's going to be the best tour. You've got Remco. Yeah, Remco's on the start line. Roglic's like, well, you guys made me lose the world to last year, so I'm out of here. Catches. I'm going, he's got a super strong team. And then you've got the Pog, who's coming off world's best form. Then you've got a bloke who you know, has had a massive stack, who won two. So we've got a really awesome tour on our hands. Got a race epic, on our hands. Well, while we're talking favourites, yeah. Who do we who do we go? Green and overall, yeah, for the yellow and and green as well. Merksy, I'm going to start with you in the bunker because you gave us Cavendish for the uh, eight nations. So, well, I'm I'm Pog. You're Pog. What about I'm for? Uh, Pog. I, I, love I him. am. I love him. Going to write this down so mm. that nobody can t can rewind their pick. Okay. What about for Green? Well, Green, Maxi? obviously, Peter Sagan. No, he's not there. It's, uh, the first. <laughs> it's, his first, it's the first time we won't see him riding the tour. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but I'm going Mil Milia, I reckon. Ooh. That's a good pick. Mm. Nice one. All right. I'll, I'll get, this time I'll, 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 I'll get uh, Philipson back in for Green. Ooh, yeah. okay, yep. Yep. He's not, in my, he's not in the eight, but he's in the... And for Yellow? Oh, well, Cuz. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. I love really? Cuz. Yeah. Yes, I want. I want. I. I love. I love a story. I love a, you know, uh, a, a fisherman. You love a fisherman. I, I love a guy <laughs> with humble roots, and hands that smell like fish. <laughs> and and honestly, like going back, as you say, coming back, tough year, whatever. Pog this, pog that. Hold my beer, says Cuz. All right, Hank. Oh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go for Pog. Yeah, that's two Pogs. Yep. Yep. And uh, Vanart. Ooh, Green okay. Jersey, Vanart. Yep. That would be cool. I like it. Yep. I really, really wanted to go with Dele uh, because the way he won the Belgian National Championships just on Sunday was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So, first five in the Belgian National Road Championships Dele first, Philipson second, Jordi Maus uh, third, Tim Millier fourth. Wout Van Aert fifth. And they started the sprint. He stood up. They put their head around the corner to see if they could make it to the to uh, to try and go around to Lee. No, nah, I'm staying back on the wheel. That's way too fast. And yeah, too okay. Hard. Yep, but yep. different story because the national road title would have been super hard, whereas a bunchy in the Tour de France, and this sounds really ridiculous, when you're in a peloton of 200 riding flat, you get sheltered from the wind, whereas the national championship would have been a lot harder. But Delee, actually, not nah, scrap that. What? Take Vanard out. Oh, put Delee, Delee in. it's his yeah. first tour too. All right, I know. I'm just putting it in there. I love it. All right, love it. So That's great. Delee, just well, came back from Lyme disease. He's yep. been the prodigy for a little while. He's actually ridden super <laughs> strong. So let's go with Delee. Great, excellent. All, all right. Uh, well, I'm going to go with Roglic. For the nice. yellows. Wow. It's a big call. I, I'm yeah. so glad someone has. I'll he's, be honest. I, I toyed with it. He's I did. a real favourite. Yep. You know, I, I just would really he love. Is. Yep. I'd really love him to be able to pull it all together. Yep. Just After he's won absolutely everything can else. Can you imagine everything Dank? else? Oh. You know, the, imagine Dank? It's it, Ralph it, Dank. He, he's so it, good, it, isn't he, Mercs? He, like, he was in his eyes oh. out. When, yeah. It, when just, Geordie Muse won. It just, don't you just love. That guy. I just yeah. watched him I know. one time on Netflix and I'm like, I want to work for that guy. Yeah. I actually he, want to work for him. And you know what's so cool? Him standing on the side of the road giving water bottles away. Yeah, yeah and he looks like yeah. the uh, train controller out of Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> They've changed that name, haven't he they? He does. The, the original name of that character was cancelled. Yes, well, that? so it should be. Why? What was it? It was derogatory. Uh, it was Hank. the fat controller. Ah. Yeah. Really? Mm. Okay. They but I didn't it. think he was that portly, and and <laughs> Ralph Denk certainly isn't portly. No, he's got a good moustache. No, but he's got, he's got a great, great moustache. 
Oh, Hang yeah. on, we're, we're talking about the human now, not the, the human. The human, Plasticine yes, yes. Character. Well, yeah, all yeah. three of you fellas have <laughs> moustachas going on to some degree. True. Yeah. I, I can't raise my arms to shave at the moment. That's why. <laughs> I could be the fat controller. <laughs> You've got to work on the mo the then. fat controller came yes. whistling into the station at 100 kilometres an hour. <laughs> oh, my God, that's so good. <laughs> Where you've just found another talent. <laughs> he was huffing and puffing all day. All right. Hang on. Yeah. Isn't that the guy from the Beatles? It's Ringo Starr, yeah. It is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. He was uh, he was the original narrator. I think he got replaced because they went to right. the animated version as opposed to the, the you know, the what yeah. were they? Like stop motion. What isn't stop motion, Merksy? What's it called? Just like miniatures, miniatures. Mm. And then he didn't stay with it. Oh. So they brought on a new guy who was... No. Just rubbish. Yeah. He wasn't Ringo. He yeah, was he didn't no have Ringo. the he, he didn't have the gravitas rubbish. of Ringo. <laughs> he was more like, "Oh, Thomas is in the station now." And it was like, "What's this about?" <laughs> Oh, treat Thomas with the respect it's just and the gone off on a it tangent. Deserves. It anyway, really has. Uh, speaking we? of... Can you uh, imagine a bike race on the island of soda? Anyway, <laughs> all right. Oh, wait, I haven't got my green. Is one. Um, I'm not going to choose Van Art, even though I would sentimentally Enter like to. Enter sound effect. But Rock, I think... Rog looks a good pick. I like him. I, I don't really think good. he's going to be ready for week one okay. to be smashing it like he normally would. Like, I think that... Come week three, he'll have more consistency, but I think it might like take Jonas, him a bit yep. of time to warm up. Um, so, I think I'm going to go. Oh, I don't really want to go for Philipson because I think he's a bit of a. He comes mm. across as a bit of a douche canoe in no. the Netflix in you Unchained. Reckon? You reckon? Yeah, yeah I noticed I no. Do. I know. Notice no one's got Ben O'Connor anywhere near any well, of these outs. Yeah, I mean, riding. you know, oh, Glutes yeah. is out. Yeah. Who's your green? Ah, uh, so who's my green? I have to pick this stone. I would have been good to pick this before the show, to be honest. It would have. Uh, <laughs> you did all the rest of the rundown. This was my job. A and special four-hour edition of the <laughs> no. Wheelhouse. I'm going to go, Michael Matthews. There you go. And I don't Ooh. actually. I, I think it will be hard. But I think because He's of so his consistency, consistent. he will be Agreed. there, 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 and okay. he may just in the mix. Get it? Yeah, he'll mix. be up the road right. too in those median days. Exactly. Gonzo exactly. So there you go. All right. Go. Well, I have written that down. Okay. As evidence. All right. Okay. Should we move on, or do we want to talk about this for another uh, twenty no, minutes? No. I did, <laughs> what, but what I did want to say while you were doing that beautiful British accent. Okay. Is um friend of friend of the show, yes. Joshy Tarling. Josh T. Hello, mate. He yes. won the national time trial. Off to the Olympics. Fantastic. I'm very sad. Ooh. Did you see that? <laughs> I'm sad that he won't be riding the track, though. He got named in the road team for the road race in the time trial. But uh, well done, Father Michael. Mother Dawn. Dawn. Yep. Was that a leak? Can we can we count? No, that as a it was leak? on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so no. Leak. Wrong country. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but there. Still. Anything, <laughs> anything. There was a brilliant podcast this week featuring Laura Kenny, yeah, uh, the most decorated female British Olympian cyclist. She was just incredible, and she talks about how a huge part of her success was her family. Mm. That her mum, she just always knew that she could call her mum or her dad, and you know, get brought down emotionally and settled and calmed. And I just think that when we talk about how cool Joshy Tarling is. Absolutely. And then you look at Father Michael and Mother Dawn, teamwork makes the dream work. What mm. can I yeah, say? Yeah, absolutely love them uh, outside of the ashes, um, <laughs> basically. So, okay, fantastic. Or well, Kate. Or the World uh, Cup. Yes, yeah. Merksy. The Aussie <laughs> Olympic team was meant to be announced on Monday, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> Today's Tuesday, Kate. Yes. That's correct. Yesterday was Monday. Blink twice. That's Why correct. wasn't it announced, Kate? Uh, well, I understand. So what happens is the Australian team nominates, they send it to the Australian Olympic Committee, but you also have then a week to file appeals. Like a cooling, oh, an appeal, yeah, of course. Appeals, of course, yeah. a cooling off period. A cooling off. Like we picked you, but actually, <laughs> we've had a change nah, not this week. Oh, no. Hey, that happened in state of origin. True, but yep. it is, no, it's for appeals and so there have been some appeals. So when is that going to be released? Uh, yeah, good question. Uh, good question, Hank. Don't know. TikTok, don't know. It's got to be announced like pretty now? soon. On here? Uh, no, not on, on here. here. Exclusively. Not on here, no. Yeah. Uh, it, that it didn't is, work either, Maxi. I, went, uh, I went through an appeal process for one of my Olympic spots. Yeah. It was hell and it ruined my Olympics. Like climbing and so Everest. It, it was worse. Mm. And There's so I really hope... Oh, <laughs> if you think I about see. it. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Well, got to think though, Maxi. Mm. It's, I, I hope all the athletes are doing well. Yeah. Um, well I'm that glad process. that they allowed that 
now because we've heard some horror stories in the past about Australian athletes getting um, having issues being um, selected and not being selected when they should have. So mm. I'm glad that that's that no. It is a very is, it is a very just and equitable process. Yeah. Okay, mm. great. Uh, okay, well, no chance. Okay, sure. No. Moving on. Even if we know, right? No worries. <laughs> uh, on that, just quickly, I mentioned State of Origin. New South Wales player Cameron McInnes got a call the night before saying you're in the team. And then when the team was read out the next day, he wasn't in the team. The That's coach called bad him and said you're in and he wasn't in. What? So these sort of things happen. You're not going to do that, Merksy, are you? No, I don't know. Actually, my headphones fell off then and I couldn't hear it. Oh. What you were saying? <laughs> Then so, just go with it. Okay, I yeah. think we're safe. The, okay. answer, the answer is yes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> EP Merckx likes that. Yeah, go. okay. So we're excellent. in. Um, now, you, uh, quickly, you're going to bring a segment back that's been missing for far too long before we I go. Am. Uh, sadly, I'm bringing back the Wheel of Misfortune. Welcome back to the Wheel of Misfortune. Kate, it what has you got for been us? a rough week for some of the women uh, on the world tour. So a very big hope for Olympic gold not for Australia, uh, for Great Britain, <laughs> Katie Archibald. Uh, she had an accident, a domestic accident, in her backyard, tripped over the garden step, broke her fibula and her tibula down at her no. ankle and is in all sorts, has had to have surgery, will certainly miss the Olympics and have a very long rehab. That's a bad Isn't break. Oh, a garden so. step. A garden step. But she was like... What? Jesus. Gold medal contender, right? Yeah, for like, Omnium, yeah. Madison and Teams for yeah. Shoot. How so, much gold has she got? She's like, she's she, draped in it. Yeah, and, and, and she? she has had a tough couple of years. Her partner passed away a couple of years ago. Oh, oh dear. Yeah. Very tough circumstance Gosh. for her. And she has used every ounce of resilience to get back and be the gold medal favourite. Yeah. And, you wouldn't uh, wish that on your worst no, enemy, it, would you? It is, we send... Oh, Every single horrible. bit of love and hope and resilience to Katie Archibald because mm -hmm. uh, it's really tough going. But doesn't it just – you think about these grand accidents that happen in cycling and why people are injured and out. It's a garden bloody step. It's yeah, just, I was just, I'm just sitting here trying to like, visualise the garden. It's, <laughs> it's, was it like hanging no, in the gardens of Babylon like or something? Buckingham Palace or something. Yeah. Like no, oh, just gee, the garden step. But it, I, look, I remember a couple of years ago – Oh maybe a decade ago, Rory Sutherland, when he was a pro, yeah. stepped off the back of his couch and shattered his heel, mm. uh, you know, and was laid up for a very long time. So sometimes the simplest of things. Was it ready to, yeah, like maybe there was... Was it yeah. ready to blow? Like yeah, 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 that sort of thing. It maybe. happened to be the garden step, but oh, yeah. maybe it could have been anything. You really hope that, that she can come back from that because when you break your leg, a la Chris Froome, um, some don't make it back. Yeah. Mm, some really don't make it back when you have those big fractures in the in the long bones of especially cyclists for that matter. Mm -hmm. It just you just don't come back. So hopefully that's not the case. Yeah, yeah and Fingers thankfully it wasn't sure. a femur, but her two lower leg bones. I mean, you've had a lot of ankle issues. It's not good. Over years, I never made it back. Years. I never really made it back after. Well, that. and and mm. while we're on the wheel of misfortune, and while we're talking about uh, dodgy ankles, mm -hmm. Ellen Van Dyke, one of the Dutch Trident, uh, Joel. Pitch Olympic fork. selection. Pitchfork, pitch for, uh, yeah, sorry. I'm not on board with that, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, Olympic selection for the new mother. Brilliant for the time trial. Yeah. Has a stack training. Broken ankle. More. So she's now still hoping to go to Paris, though, to the point where she's on the trainer. She's got videos on her social media in, a, in still a cast, not even a moon boot yet, like a cast on the trainer. Well, what date's so, the Olympic time trial? Is it in late uh, it, July? No, the 27th of July. So she's got a month. Yeah. Heaps of time. She, not I'm kidding, really. I'm kidding. Yeah. Mm. No time at all. Well, look, you well, know, heaps five of time weeks. she had the flu, but... Mm. Well, if you're the best, right, at that, and like we were talking before, if you're just... If you've got so much class and power and strength and you've had that injury, then maybe that is the case. I remember Brad McGee winning a Com Games gold medal. 12 days after he broke his cotton one. Yeah. And yeah. this is in the IP. Yeah. At so the Sydney to, Olympics. At the, yeah. So was it Sydney? Yeah, it was Sydney. Sorry, yep. I apologise, Brad, yep. if you're listening. Um, he is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> G'day, Brad. Yeah, of course so he is, Hank. It, it, can, it, it can come back quickly, <laughs> but um, ankle-wise, maybe not. 
Yeah, ankles are a tough one. But mm, again, we send heal. all our very, very best. So often the Wheel of Misfortune, we have a little bit of fun with that. There is no fun with that this Fair week. Enough, there is yeah. only some a lot of uh, a lot of love going to those ladies. I hope Katie can find together. dig yeah extra resources because that that's a terrible run. It's a terrible run of, of misfortune, genuine misfortune. And yes. Mm. My goodness, a garden step. Can I, as we say, can only think it, it must have been brittle and ready to, yeah, compromise. It's, basically, you have to think that's that. just a whole big old can of bad luck. Um, <laughs> it is a big old can of bad luck. Kate's wearing an Olympic shirt today. Hey, Kate, was in the Olympic team? <laughs> <laughs> Not going to happen. All right, fair enough. Hopefully uh, next week. We what will be that? able to, but Stop what us. we can say is Merksy and I had our really close eye on the BMX freestyle qualifications, yeah. the Olympic qualifiers, mm. and Natalia deemed great news in the women. She has secured her Olympic berth. Good on you, Natalia, Excellent. because it's a hard, hard task. She but smashed it. She smashed it, mm. yep. and she's such a dedicated athlete. It's so great to see. But Logan Martin... He has to wait and see whether oh, no. he gets one of the wild card spots. Ah, uh, he didn't make the final. He didn't make the final in the Olympic qualifier. There you go. You, That's what we're talking about, Carapaz. We had a discussion mm. on this, that reigning gold medal Carap- uh, right to be there. Carapaz, yep. Yeah, yeah. I Does still that apply to Logan think, Martin? I still think they should have the automatic start if they're still in the world to it. You know, like if Carapaz is retired, no. But mm. if they're still internationally, say, ranked in the top 150 or something, I think they should get an auto start. But that's mm. a debate for another day. But Totally disagree. Logan Martin. <laughs> well, but for Logan Martin, like, this is where it's hard. Just, he yeah, was yeah. focusing on Paris. Yeah, he had yeah. all his focus and form mm. based on Paris. So he's a bit underdone and now that's in jeopardy. Wow. I, that's that's a... But I see, that's why it makes it special, right? You've got yep. to be getting everything right for the Olympics. And if you can't make it, you're not good enough, then catch you later. Yeah. See you in four years. Well, yeah. like Lulu. Mm. Lulu's ditching the tour yeah. because he wants to win in Paris. In Bali. Mm. Well, you know what? I'm on team um, Logan and Carapaz. You should automatically be there. Hank is not. I am not. No no gimme. I, yeah. I, I, look, it's funny because with Logan, I'm like, it, it, he was that good, but form's form leading form's into the games. Form. If he's not there... It should be outside country quota. It but should be an extra bonus spot. He's been mm. good, like, leading I, up. I get why you say that. You'd have to make I the village bigger. That. You'd have to have a bigger oh. village. Or, I don't know, like, maybe the swimming relay doesn't get three oh. alternates. That's yeah, no medleys. <laughs> Stick your medley I think the, the best going. performing athletes <laughs> Hang on, Gina, Re- Gina Reinhardt's just on the phone. <laughs> Hello, Jim. But hold on, I'm also <laughs> going to again. call a little mini bit of BS around this because they bang on about how it's village size and that's what we're told. Most of the Australian cycling team aren't staying in the village because so we could have more it's spots. too far from the velodrome. So they're not right. even taking the spots up. So see, come on now. Is, the, are they, is it in Bordeaux, the track? No, it is not beautiful. Wine region and track, as it happens. No, yeah. it's uh, Yves en Saint-Quentin. Saint Quentin en Evelon. You might want to practice that I one. I do. Babe. Oh my gosh! Mm. One of our couch peloton, Anna. I'm so sorry, Anna. She always calls us out, or everybody, not just us, everybody on bad accents. Please, if you were listening, I apologise. Have another go yeah. at it. Uh, Saint Quentin en Evelyn. Saint Quentin. Anna, Saint I'm, Quentin yep. en Evelyn. I'm. <laughs> I'm never going to talk again on this show after hearing Saint that, Anna. Quentin <laughs> en Evelyn. No, you go right, mate. You've got a really good Bob, not Bob the Builder. Um, <laughs> Thomas does, the Tank does. Engine. I don't think Bob the Builder talks, <laughs> so yeah, Bob perfect. The builder. Engine. Ringo well, Starr. Ringo Starr. That sounds not. better. <laughs> Ringo ahead, Starr. <laughs> ahead of the Olympics. Sorry, mate. Scott McGrory <laughs> and I will, sp- and Phil Liggett, yeah. will spend countless hours going through the names and making sure... They are pronounced well. Good so idea. A good. That's a good. That is reassurance yeah. to you, Anna. Yep. We will not muck it up there. A professional on the biggest approach. stage yep. in the world. Yep. 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 Uh, okay. Now, before we go, because you're about to sign us off, Joel. I am. Yes. Um, what I want to do. We haven't done this before. Okay. Sorry, Merxy. This is for you, Merxy. We are so grateful for what you do. We are shooting our last episode in Bunker Point One. 
We are about to move to Bunker Point 2 um, and we record with River City Studios. Uh, this is such a brilliant, wonderful space it is. that amazing. we get. And Merksy, you have built it. In between recordings, he is literally in a warehouse building another studio. Um, he looks quite handsome with his work he's, boots on he's and he's funny. He's the builder. He's Merksy the he's builder. He's a lumberjack and that's builder. okay. Yep, yep. So I just wanted to gratitude to Merksy. Yeah, Merksy. Yeah, what yeah, a great. wonderful run oh, we've had same. here. 101 episodes in Bunker Point 1. Bunker Point 2, here we come. I, I echo it across the board. Absolutely love it here. It's always set so beautifully. Like technically, there is not... A question to be asked. He's Merksy is so on top of the game and he has just turned this space well, into its rock best up possible. And get it, done. it is. I mean, yeah. there is yeah. it, this beautiful yeah. table we sit at is quite big. The door that it needs to get out is quite small. So if mm. the tape, if we can get the desk out the door, it'll be in bunker easy. 2.0. In about easy. 30 minutes, I'll be getting my big hammer out. So <laughs> stick around for that. Act- yeah, thanks, Kathy Bates. Come uh, on, viewers. Some video footage of that. Okay. <laughs> yep. Yep. Me swinging it swinging around. Sledge, I love Emma. it. Oh, excellent. Yep, no, it's fantastic. Every week, Kate and I, we just come puffing in, but Max, he's been here setting up and chunting trucks for hours. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's a hard-working engine. He yeah. really is. So uh, thank you, Merksy. RCS.1. What did we say? 0.1 or 1.0? 1. 1.0. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. Yeah, sure. I said 0.1, I think, but I mean 1.0. 1. River City Studios, 1.0. Point oh. Yeah. Um, now we're going to two. Well, 2. isn't 0. it just River City Studios, and then the next one is River City Studios two point oh? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. However you like. Hey, uh, Hank. <laughs> while you're teasing me, good luck in France. Thank you. I'm going to need it. Yeah. Enjoy the tourmalade. No, it's no enjoy. We would like up, photos. Can we get a yeah? Daniel. Can we get a cross? Can yeah. we organise a yeah? Like a, a yeah. A, 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 if, a a live if, if, if live is possible, yeah. but otherwise we we'll have to see how we go. Get you yeah. to file some. Some content. Some reports. <laughs> yes. I'd have to get up pretty early. That'll be right. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Yeah, the answer, Hank, is yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's the answer. <laughs> oh, I love it. All right. Excellent. The Wheelhouse Cycling <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> Wheelhouse 101. Uh, there for you today. Thank you very much, Hank Vogels. Tra- uh, safe travels. Do you want us to look after the jersey for you, or are you using that to lure uh, Well, I probably Bergen. won't get it on. Yeah. Uh, it is a fairly skinny one, but yeah, yeah. You guys can hold on to it. We'll, we'll, look, we'll take right. good care of it. Brisbane to Gold Coast, you can whack it on. K- yeah, Kate's going to spray paint it in Parramatta colours. You realise that. That's <laughs> what happens to... I'll yeah. just stick a logo across yeah. the bottom. Sunshine Coast, Parramatta. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'll break Google. Yeah, no, there's a comparison. Okay. Oh. oh, shots fired. Oh. Okay. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Tell everyone you know we'll be back for 102 with an exclusive live cross at 2 a.m. Uh, in France from Hank Vogels. That's locked in, confirmed. So if you tune in for no other reason next week, make sure you tune in for that. There you go. You can't get out of it now. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Our future depends on it. (laughs) And that's a wrap. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. (laughs) Bye, everyone. Time to get the big hammer out. Catch ya. Big hammers and push-ups. What's going on?